Hi parents, before we start the episode, remember that your family can enjoy hundreds of fun and educational free videos for kids of all ages. Be sure to subscribe and get all the new shows and updates at PragerUKids.com. Welcome to Craftery by PragerU Kids. Crafts, history, and your questions. I'm Jill, and today we're making craft stick planes that fly to learn about American aviation. Oh, we've got a question. What does aviation mean? Aviation is a big word. It means the flying or operating of aircraft. The word aviation comes from the Latin word always which means bird. Aviation is a word we use now to describe anything that has to do with airplanes. Now here's what we need for today's craft. Eight large craft sticks, a hot glue gun, two rubber bands, scissors, markers, and stickers. Throughout history, people dreamed of flying. In the 1500s, the artist and inventor Leonardo da Vinci studied birds to figure out how they were able to fly. Hundreds of years later, the first powered flight in the world took place on December 17th, 1903 in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. A man named Orville Wright designed an airplane with his brother Wilbur. The plane was known as the Wright Flyer and soared 120 feet through the air for 12 whole seconds. Let's get started making our aviation flyer now. We're first going to take two sticks and our scissors. Now I've marked in light pencil where I'm going to cut. Right now, we're making the cockpit and the tail. You ready? Woo, it worked. And you're gonna have a small piece just like this. Let's do the other one. Two pieces of equal length. There we go. We're gonna keep these small pieces and move these other ones away. Hang on to these, we're gonna come right back to them. Next, take a brand new stick, just like this. And we're gonna cut a little triangle piece right on the end. I want you to watch how I do it and then copy what I do. Ready? Woo! <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> now we're going to make a little triangle just like this. Woo! There it goes. <gasps> Thank you, just like this. A right triangle with a little extra right here. Keep this, we're gonna use it very soon. And put this piece aside. Next, take out another stick because we're gonna start gluing down the cockpit, the tail, and that little triangle piece for a surprise at the very end. Here we go. Get your hot glue gun and be sure to ask a parent for help. Careful, it's hot. Take one of these pieces that we cut at the very beginning and glue it on the far end to be the tail. Hot glue, careful, careful, and very gently, just like this. See how that works? Next, take that other little piece and find the halfway mark on your stick right about here. What I'm gonna do is make sure that this point right here hits the top of the stick and to make sure that this is positioned very slightly at an angle because this is the cockpit where the pilot sits. And glue it. Just like that. This point is going to be about one inch from the end of the front of our plane. Ta-da! Okay, time to take that little triangle-ish piece that we made. Oh, it's a little bit long. There we go. I want this piece to fit right 
there. Just like this. You got that? Check your work, check your work. We're building an airplane here because now you're gonna take another stick and sandwich it on top of what you just made. Bing! Just like that. <laughs> you got it? Good. A few years after the Wright brothers' success, airplanes became faster and were able to fly higher in the sky. Hotshot pilots sought glory and broke records to achieve historical firsts. In the 1920s, something called barnstorming became really popular entertainment. That was when pilots would perform stunts like spins and dives and loops in the air. Some pilots even went so far to walk on their plane's wings. Do not try that at home. If you happen to live near an airfield now, you might be able to check out an air show and watch pilots perform these kinds of death-defying stunts in the air. Speaking of stunts in the air, let's make our wings now. You're gonna grab another stick, I think we're on stick number six now, and lightly mark the midpoint, right in the middle of the craft stick. You're going to glue this piece underneath the piece we just created to make the wings. Take your glue, watch me first, and then do. The line down the middle, stick it on so that the end of the cockpit lines up with the back end of your wing. And I'm gonna use some more glue to reinforce the sides. All right, so what's missing? The rear wing. I'm gonna show you how to make it right now. Take the stick that you used before to cut the little teeny tiny triangle and lay it down like this. You're gonna make a trapezoid. Who knows what a trapezoid is? Oh, wonderful, I knew you would know. Let's mark a trapezoid about three inches long from the longest part of the tip and I'm just going to mark it just like this. And I'm gonna cut it right there. One, two, three. There we go. See, trapezoid. Now let's mark the middle because this is where we are going to glue the main part of our plane. Right on the back. And you want to leave about a half an inch hanging off the back there. Reinforce the sides. There we go, ta-da! There's our ta-da. We're almost done. Now, before we finish, you wanna hear about some cool records that were made in the early years of American aviation? Remember these names. Charles Lindbergh. In 1927, he was a 25-year-old mail delivery pilot from Minnesota who became an international hero when he flew by himself across the Atlantic Ocean. His airplane was named the Spirit of St. Louis, and he flew 3,600 miles from New York City to Paris in 33 and a half hours. Next up, Amelia Earhart. In 1932, she became the first woman to fly by herself across the Atlantic, 2,000 miles from Newfoundland to Ireland in 15 hours. She became the most famous female pilot in the world and flew more long distances solo after that. But in 1937, she and her co-pilot, Frederick J. Noonan, tried to fly around the world when their plane disappeared in the South Pacific. No one knows for sure what happened to them. It's still a big mystery today. And last but not least, Chuck Yeager. In 1947, this test pilot became the first man to break the sound barrier in his Bell X-1 plane. So how do you break the sound barrier? Well, by going really, really fast. Let's make something right now to get our plane here to go really, really fast. Buckle up, passengers. Glue one rubber band at the top of one of your R sticks. Fold our rubber band a little bit at the bottom. St 
stick it on just like that. A little bit more glue. Next, glue the other stick right on top. Just like that. Put some muscle in it. Now, I like to take the other rubber band and wrap it around the outside just for reinforcement. Now, before we get our aviation flyer actually flying, I do think that we need to decorate it. Helping hands, please. Okay, you ready to be test pilots? It's time to fly. Get your slingshot and attach it just like this. This is what this little piece on the bottom was for. Hold it at an angle. Wings up. <laughs> that was awesome! America is a leader in aviation technology. We have made some of the most amazing and sophisticated aircraft of all time. From fighters like the F-14, to bombers like the B-52, and spy planes like U-2 and SR-71. American companies have also made incredible aircraft to get us to and from vacations, like the Jumbo 747 jet. There are almost 20,000 airports in America and almost 3 million people flying every single day, thanks to American freedom and innovation. We hope you had fun. If you've got ideas or questions for our next craftery, send them our way. Keep crafting, keep learning, and keep celebrating land of the free and home of the brave. Should we take off again? Yeah. Yes! Three, two, one, look out! Woo! Thank you for watching. You know we've got more episodes, right? Watch the whole series on our website. And parents, you can subscribe at PragerUKids.com.